Hey, you guys, how's everybody doing? I feel like I haven't been here in a while. I think I missed a couple of lives, maybe just one with Hur Hurricane Laura. And I hope my friends in Lake Charles, Ben Terry, my meteorologist friend in Lake Charles, who's working out of WAFB right now. Love you, friend. And I hope you're doing okay. Um, he has been such a wealth of information during all of this. So I hope some of you guys will jump in here with me. Um, I don't know if Reagan's with me or um, Chelsea, but this recipe is hot off the presses. I just added it to the website. So when you go to recipes, it's the first one up because I literally just added it 10 minutes ago. So I'm super excited about this recipe and I'm gonna get started and then explain to you all what I'm doing and why, but I am in my Instant Pot and I've got it on saute on hot and I've added our smoked extra extra virgin virgin olive oil so this is a great olive oil if you like grilling but it's also a great olive oil um, i recommend it to vegans and vegetarians to get that smoky flavor into things like beans and grains when you're not using a smoked meat so one of my favorites um, we sell a ton of it and it's delicious in this stew. So I'm going to get started. So my instant pot is on hot, is, is hot. It's on saute. Let's see if I can show you guys the dial. So I love my instant pot. I have several, we have several at the shop. I have two here at home and I was late to the party. I was not on board with Instant Pots. I, um, let me get that set up. I was like, I don't need gadgets. What's going on here? And then my friend Lily pulled a cheesecake out of this thing. I was like, hang on, let's talk about this. So we teach a lot of Instant Pot classes at the shop. And they're super fun, and they are always a learning experience for me. Instant Pot on saute on hot. And I'm going in with two sliced onions. And we should get that wonderful sound. And I'm going to try to keep an eye on things and answer questions. But in go those onions, and we want to saute them until they're softened and they start turning brown. Let me get my tool here. I'm going to stir these around and then I'm going to explain to you what I'm making. So I am making a sweet potato, corn, and traditionally pork. Um, I'm actually going to do this batch with chicken, but it is loosely based on an Argentinian stew called locro. And when I read this recipe in the latest issue of Milk Street magazine, I was enamored. I love soup, first of all. So this is a brothy stew and I was all about it. And even though it's 98 degrees outside, I am so ready for fall, and this is a fall and winter time. Set it and forget it, and then you come in in the evening, and it's ready to go. You sip the broth, and you have all these wonderful vegetables inside. So Milk Street is a media company that does wonderful books and recipes and a radio show, and we are a partner location. So you're welcome to head over to milkstreet.com and check them out, but know that we teach their philosophy in our shop. Um, 
I went and trained with them last year and it's one of the best things I've ever, ever did. So we have all their books, we have this magazine and we teach what they believe in our shop. So that's who Milk Street is. You should get to know them, but if you get to know us, you get to know them. So on with this stew. So we've got to let those guys cook and I'm going to talk about the other ingredients in here. So we've got butternut squash, we've got corn, we've got tomatoes. So your tomatoes, you could chop a whole tomato and canned tomatoes would work, but I loved their suggestion of using grape or cherry tomatoes cut in half. Um, I really loved that. And I love the broth that it gave off. So you wanna grab some of those. And here in Louisiana, farmers are still, while we're not seeing so many homegrown tomatoes, there's still lots of cherry and grape tomatoes out there. You may have some in your yard. And then butternut squash, which is so interesting to me because it's definitely got a fall and autumn reputation and I'm all for it at that time of the year, but it's a winter squash because it's planted in winter. And so we're getting it now at the tail end of summer and then we'll have it for quite a while. My friend, Allison, who's a farmer taught me that and I didn't realize that but you want two cups of cubed butternut squash. So that goes in there. I'm gonna show you these onions in just a minute because because they're starting to brown and get soft and it smells pretty amazing in here. Okay, so we've got corn, we've got tomatoes, we've got butternut squash, and then depending on which recipe you look at for this dish, some have beans and some do not. And so I'm here for a bean any day. And I noticed that a lot of recipes had lima beans. So this is a little baby lima bean. And I know a lot just lost a lot of people. Lima, lima beans get a bad reputation, um, but they're delicious. And I love the texture. And I just think they're beautiful in this dish. And then what we do for the flavor is a spice blend that I sell called barbacoa. So barbacoa means, means barbecue. Um, and it's used throughout that region on smoked meats. So it's got a good bit of spice, a good bit of smoked paprika and cumin and other herbs in it but we up the cumin in this by adding some ground cumin. So let's talk about this butternut squash because, hey there, Mary. I did get them frozen. So I found them here in Baton Rouge at Southside. They have a big freezer case full of frozen beans. And I always stock up when I'm there and they have the little baby lima beans there. Um, and I like the color of them. So a traditional lima bean will get kind of muddy on you. And I like how things look in my food. It still tastes delicious. Um, but I do like the color and look of the baby lima bean. But Southside, Mary, here in Baton Rouge at um, Glenn Perkins. So get a big bag of them and tuck them in your freezer. Okay, these are coming along beautifully. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely stop at that freezer section at Southside. They like do it right there. Everything that's peak and in season in an overabundance, they bag up and freeze. So peaches and strawberries and blueberries. I like them. Okay. Let me talk about this butternut squash because this guy was gigantic and I'm going to cube it up to use for another uh, purpose just to saute or roast. So the first thing I want to do with this butternut squash, when it's this big, I know all the way from the top to here, I have no seeds. So I can just cut that and then get that to a manageable place. And that's the easy part. So I want to make sure I make a cut where I get to a flat side. And then I'm just going to cut these guys. And this is not you, usually not my best moment when I'm doing knife skills in a class because these things are tough. 
So you have to know where your knife can go to work for you. And it's back here. That's where a lot of power and strength is. So you want to forget up here and back here is where you want to make sure you're taking the best advantage of your knife. So that's where there's a lot of strength. So I'm going to also use a little bit of brute force to cut through that and then cut these guys in planks and then turn them and cut them in cubes. So the size is all about what is your perfect bite. I don't want an unwieldy, large piece of butternut squash in my bowl of soup. I want my diner, my person who is enjoying what I cook to be able to take an easy bite. So I cut these rather small. A couple of these are large and I'm going to pop them in half. But you want cubes that are easy to manage, but not too small that they cook down to smithereens when they go in the instant pot. Okay, let's get these into cubes. And I'm just going to add them so I'll have a little bit more butternut squash than my two cups that I have ready. But that is going to go in here shortly. So let's get to a place where we can get our spice blends in. Here I am. Yeah, so I'm getting some browning down here, and they're nice and soft. I'm going to show these to you guys in just a second. So I'm building up a little bit of fond in my pot. And you want to make sure you scrape all of that up because the instant pot doesn't know what fond is. It thinks it's burning and it'll give you a burn warning and it won't proceed at that point. And we know it well at Red Stick Spice. We call it the barley incident. And it happened in a class, and that Instant Pot was having none of that barley. And that was a calculation error on my part, thinking I could do simple math to um, increase my quantity of barley, and you can't in an Instant Pot. Okay. Oh, your Instant Pot is broken, Mary. That's no good. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. There are some models that the fuse is faulty. Um, and so he may want to buy a couple when you get the new fuse to replace it. Okay, so here we are. They're starting to brown. They're softened. They're softened. They're getting brown. And I'm ready to add my spice blend. One day, after many days of doing... Facebook Live, I will learn how to work this camera. Okay, so spice blend and cumin and salt go in now because what's going to happen is it's going to make like a paste with the onions. So two tablespoons of barbacoa and we need a good two teaspoons. You might even add more at the end of salt and another good two teaspoons of cumin. So, in that goes, and I'm going to stir that around, and it's going to get thick and pasty, and that's what you want it to do. I'm going to show you guys in just a minute, because we're toasting the spices at this point. There's not enough fat in the pan to call it blooming, so it's definitely toasting and it's getting me and it smells amazing. But I want to show you what this looks like because it turns bright brick red and it's pasty and you can smell the change in the spices from smelling them raw to what happens on heat. So let's take a look-see at that. So we want to make sure it's super pasty and really sizzling and that you can smell that those spices are toasting. Okay, I'm back. All right, in goes that guy. We're going to let that do its thing just for a second. We need our garlic in here as well. So I've got four cloves of garlic. I have minced most of them and I'm going to mince one here. 
and we're going to get that in and you want to just get that going until it's fragrant. Okay. And goes all that garlic, set that aside. And then let me come back here. Okay. In goes our garlic. And then we kind of do a dump, dump, dump and the lid goes on. Okay. So in goes my garlic. And I'm starting to get a little more browning on the bottom here than I'd like. So I'm going to get my water in here now. And I can feel it loosen up as I stir. And getting all that fond off the bottom because the Instant Pot doesn't know that fond is our friend and makes great flavor. So I don't feel any more resistance on the bottom. Okay, in goes my butternut squash. Let me get all of that in there. And my tomatoes and my beans. No tomatoes left behind. Beans go in. These are frozen. Oh, we talked about that already. And in the previous batch that I made, I used frozen cubed pork shoulder and uh, the 25 minutes was fine. All right, get that. That's gorgeous. Raw. That's amazing. Okay. Let me get all that out of the way and show you a really important part of this dish. So corn on the cob, you hold your knife. Is perpendicular the right term? Anyway, get the cobs so that you have a flat side so that you can stand it up. Then your knife saws back and forth and gets those kernels off of there. You won't make this mess, I promise. It's gonna be perfect at your house. And these kernels go in and then you take the knife and some corn, depending on where we are in the season, you might get this is uh, milking the corn cobs. You might get more liquid than at different parts of the season. I'm not getting a ton, but it's still deliciousness. So this is lots of flavor, lots of starch. It's going to give you body. It's going to give you super depth of flavor. So you want to get all of that in there. And you can see it's like a milky liquid. Then remember, this part of your knife is your friend right now. So you don't need to be doing any sawing or piercing. Let this back in near the bolster do its work for you. So hold it there. And then you wanna cut this in half and that is going in our Instant Pot. So it's the same thinking for any of us in South Louisiana who make shrimp and corn soup, or those of us in other parts of the country who make chowder. If you make chowder, just bring me some, because I love it. But these cobs have so much starch and flavor in them that they are part of making, you can use this to make a stock, but we're going to go in this Instant Pot with these and essentially it's going to make our stock in the Instant Pot for us and we're just going to fish them out at the end. A great way to make complete use of the corn and yeah, um, and you just fish them out at the end. Okay, corn goes in and I'm getting some little bubbles. I'm still on saute getting some little bubbles, but at this point, I'm about to hit cancel and get my lid on here. Oh, chicken would help. Okay, so here's the other thing I wanna show you. I'm gonna get my chicken in and stir it up and show you because it's a little concerning. You say, that's not enough liquid. I need more liquid in there, but it works perfectly. So many things in here are gonna let off liquid that you're gonna have a really brothy soup at the end. 
Let me clean up here a little bit and I'll get my chicken in. So two pounds of, again, it's traditionally pork shoulder, boneless. You cut it in cubes. Um, I used the pork shoulder for the first batch, so I'm going in with chicken this time. So in I go with my chicken, and I'm going to stir that up, and I'm going to show this to you because you're going to see how little liquid it seems, but it works perfectly. Let me get that all. I would say these chicken breasts are semi-frozen. I just took, they defrosted a little. I like to cut them semi-frozen. They just make life easier. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. Boop. Okay. And it's bubbling, bubbling. I'm going to do it. Don't worry. So it doesn't look like much liquid at all. It looks like a whole lot of stew and not a lot of liquid, but it works perfectly. Okay. So then top on. So this is your, depending on your Instant Pot, whoops, this is your releasing valve here. You want to make sure, I always press it and undo it just to make sure. So you want it on sealing, not releasing. Down is releasing. It's letting all the steam out. Up is sealing. So I always press it and undo it every time. So then what you do is you press cancel, you go to pressure cook, and we want to pressure cook for 25 minutes on high, and then we're going to naturally release for 15 minutes. So that counter is going to go up to 25, then beep, and the pressure cook is finished, and then it's going to go up to 15, and that's the natural release. And then you hit the button, let the steam out and then you're off to the races. So I am going to tell that thing to go and we're gonna pressure cook that one and we're all gonna just wait. I'm kidding, I made one. Okay, let's talk about it. Cause it's delicious. Oh, let me get a bowl. Every time I do that and a spoon. Here I come, don't worry. I'll be back. And I have my ladle and I have cilantro chopped and ready to go. You're going to do some cilantro in it and some cilantro on it. Let me get my tongs and let's get that corn, those corn cobs out of here. I know I've got four in there. That pork is falling apart so that 25 minutes was perfect and there it is so get those guys out of there and then I want to show you the consistency so it's brothy and full of vegetables let's go in with some cilantro it's also lovely with a little squeeze of lemon So in goes the cilantro, and then I'm going to get myself a serving taste with you guys. So let's take a look. So brothy, full of color, beautiful butternut squash, big pieces of the pork. It could be chicken. Absolutely beautiful. I want more cilantro for sure. You could do parsley if you have an anti cilantro person, but really, really gorgeous and absolutely delicious. Warm, crusty bread with this. You're done. All right, let's take a bite. 
So what I love about dishes like this is that there's that instantaneous balance of richness with sweet and it just makes it perfect. So you've got sweetness from the corn, from the butternut squash, from the tomatoes. And then there's smokiness from the smoked extra virgin olive oil. Cumin is earthy and rich. The pork is rich and nice fattiness to it. And then the beans are like that earthy. And so you've got perfect balance of flavors, but also textures. Really, really beautiful. Gosh, I love this. Really delicious. Butternut squash is out there at, especially in Baton Rouge, at our farmer's market. Um, those cherry tomatoes or really any tomato that's available. So this is, even though it's soup and it's hot, it's seasonal. Mm. Perfect. So good. So I've got my containers. You guys know how much I love We're using jars. So I've got con my containers. My son, Clay, who doesn't return um, my Tupperware containers, gets a jar. So we repurpose that. And so I'm going to jar this up for him and bring him some. And then I've got my jars for my lunches easily for the next three days. We've got supper for tonight. You guys, when you do this, it's not going to make, you're not going to make this mess. It's going to be perfect. Don't worry. Only I make a mess like this, but that that's for clay and he gets a jar and then I've got my lunches and I'm excited about this dish. I'm so glad I thumbed through my new issue. It was funny. I was excited about the cover story, which is awesome. But then I found this that wasn't on the cover. And I was like, ooh, that's what I'm making. So I am packed up for my lunches. I've got something for clay. I've got my supper for tonight. I was all total, I would say all in one hour. And absolutely delicious. It's seasonal. It's going to get us ready for fall. This is going to stick to your ribs. And I love it. I hope you'll try it. All right, you guys. I love doing this with you all. Thank you for hanging in there with me. We are excited about new changes to our cooking classroom and getting everyone in there. So I hope to have a sneak peek for you guys soon. Um, but thank you for watching. I love you all. And I'll see you next time. Bye.